Works Committee will now come to order. Will the clerk please call the roll? Mr. Blankley. Present. Mr. Blankley is present. Mr. Florio. Mr. Hebert. Here. Mr. Hebert is present. Ms. Hugh Smith. Present. Ms. Hugh Smith is present. Mr. Johns. Here. Mr. Johns is present. Mr. Mafucci. Here. Mr. Mafucci is present. Chairman McCabe. Present. Chairman McCabe is present. President Lamar. Here. Mr. Lamar is present. Is there anyone signed up for the public forum? There is not. Is there anyone present who has not signed up to speak who would like to address the committee at this time? Seeing none, seeing none, we will conclude the public forum. The next item on the agenda is the approval of the minutes. You have the September 28th, 2022 minutes of the Environment and Public Works Committee before you. They will stand approved unless the clerk is notified of any changes by the end of the day. The next item on the agenda is new business. Referral number 22-0334, acceptance of grants from the New York State Department of Environmental Conservation Municipal Zero Emission Vehicle Infrastructure Grant Project. Moved by Legislator Hebert, seconded by Legislator Johns. Is there any discussion? Uh, Legislator Hugh Smith. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman, to the administration. I, I know at some point there were some delays with um, acquiring materials for charging stations. Do you have an um, update as to whether that is uh, through the chair, uh, you are correct uh, on the first grant uh, that the county was successful in receiving. There were some supply chain issues as it relates to the charging stations, but uh, they have been delivered and we expect those to be operational uh, at five locations uh, in the first quarter of 2023. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Garland. And just uh, thank you to the county executive and, and the DS staff for obtaining the grant. Thank you, legislator. Any other questions? Legislator Hebert. Thank you. Um, what is the current size of the county's electric vehicle fleet compared to gas or diesel vehicles? Uh, through the chair, uh, we have 22 hybrid vehicles. Uh, we have uh, one plug-in hybrid. Uh, one full electric, and we have what I would characterize, and again, this is in our um, primarily our passenger, uh, as well as medium and, and heavy duty, we have 360 green vehicles that are fueled on a variety of different fuels, biodiesel, E85, propane, and CNG. But as it relates to hybrids and plug-in hybrids, we have a total of 24. Uh, thank you, and through you, Mr. Chairman, to the administration, I refer you to legislation action, I'm sorry, legislative action number three. Is this typical wording or is this specific to this particular referral? Through the chair, uh, that is a typical language for grant uh, re referrals. Uh, through you, Madam, Mr. Chairman, uh, the reason I ask that question is it seems to give blanket approval for the administration to utilize any future grants in the program without coming to the legislature. Am I reading that correctly? Yeah. Mr. Chairman, this particular legislative action number three uh, is typical in grant referrals. It refers to uh, first any grant that crosses calendar years, we have many grants that run, say, October through September, et cetera, et cetera. It also applies to grant multi-year grants. Um, you'll recall that uh, the Public Defender, Conflict Defender Office routinely receive through Indigent Legal Services three-year grants uh, to run their programs. Uh, so this language allows us to reappropriate unspent funds from the grant in the next calendar year. <clears throat> Thank you. Uh, and through you, Mr. Chairman, since there's only four sites listed, I'm assuming those four sites are where these charging stations will be located. Is that correct? Uh, through the chair, yes, it will be those four sites. I, I know the language in the referral says up to four sites, but it will be indeed those four sites. <clears throat> Thank you. And through you, Mr. Chairman, does the grant provide adequate funds to cover any inflationary costs, material increases, et cetera? Are we confident that's the case? Uh, through the chair, based on the uh, estimates that we put together, including contingency, we're, contingency, we're, we're confident that we have sufficient funds to um, install 
uh, the charging stations at all four locations. Wonderful, thank you. And through you, Mr. Chairman, what is the lifespan of a charging station? I've not seen that anywhere. Uh, through the chair, um, there is a, a, a warranty and service period. Um, uh, and we also have an obligation under a, a 10, this grant requires a 10 year reporting period as well too. So um, again, we, we expect that the equipment will last beyond the 10 years of the grant uh, itself. But again, this is a newer technology for us. So we will certainly put it through its paces. Thank you. And through the, you, Mr. Chairman of the administration, are there any other features of the grant that require the county to do things? do other things beyond what's listed in the referral language? Uh, through the chair, uh, we do have to report to the DEC um, the usage of the grant, uh, uh, excuse me, of the equipment itself. In other words, you know, uh, the frequency, the amount of electricity that's used, um, collecting data as it relates to uh, greenhouse gas emission reductions. So it's really tracking the usage, reporting it back to the state and we'll do that on a quarterly basis. Thank you, and through you, Mr. Chairman, to the administration, uh, the grant states that these stations will be available for use by both county vehicles and public vehicles. Will the public be charged for the use? And if yes, how? And if not, why not? Uh, through the chair, uh, no, they will not, uh, because again, they are used uh, for uh, county vehicles, but available for the public. Uh, at this time, as with the prior grant, uh, we are not charging. The grant does require them to be available to the public. Um, and again, this is uh, new technology for us, so this is a great opportunity for us to learn uh, the demand um, for these applications and obviously encourage uh, people to use uh, electric vehicles uh, at county facilities. Thank you, and through you, Mr. Chairman, one last question. What does an average charge cost? Uh, through the chair, if, if a charging station is uh, operational for say 50% of the day, say 12 hours a day, that annual cost would be approximately, again, annual cost would be approximately $2,300. And that, that uh, one station has two uh, uh, connection points. So it could be charging two vehicles. And, and just to clarify through you, Mr. Chairman, that's 2300 annual for the electricity that's being provided. Through the chair, that is correct. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, I yield the floor. Any other discussion? Seeing those, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Next item. Referral number 22-0336, amend resolution 425 of 2000. I'm missing that. Hold on one second. Of 2020 to amend the contract with Bergman Associates, Architects, Engineers. No, one second. Sorry. Yep, that's right. I'm going to restart. Amend resolution 425 of 2020 to amend the contract with Bergman Associates, Architects, Engineers, Landscape Architects, and Surveyors, DPC for Professional Design Services for Monroe County Climate Action Plan. Moved by Legislator John, second by Legislator Ebert. <laughs> All right, is there any discussion? Legislator Hugh Smith? Oh. Okay. Hmm. Through you, Mr. Chairman, to the administration, uh, just like to extend thank you to move, for moving this forward, uh, having served on the Climate Action Plan Advisory Committee uh, Bergman's work for phase one was certainly helpful and we look forward to working with them, conduct the uh, analysis for the community-wide emissions. Thank you, Legislator Hugh Smith. Legislator Hebert. Thank you. Administration, uh, the, the, in the referral that we received are the words no additional cost. Does that mean that we're paying the same amount for each of an additional two years or there's no cost at all? Uh, through the chair, this gives uh, us the ability to extend the contract for two years to complete the work, but it's not authorizing us to 
uh, expend um, any funds beyond the three hundred eighty thousand five hundred twenty dollars listed in the referral. Thank you, and uh, that's what I was hoping for. And through you, Mr. Chairman, what sort of design services is this additional money planned for to you be used for? Uh, through the chair. Um, Design services is, is a really a generic term. It's, it's planning services um, consistent with the service planning services provided for uh, phase one. Uh, it will be doing very similar work, um, but at a community wide level rather than at a county operations level. So it will be from Bergman, the same uh, professionals will continue to advance phase two. Uh, but the level of work, again, is similar, but it will be uh, more involved uh, from a modeling standpoint, from the greenhouse gas modeling. Um, but what's a, what's a key component of their scope of work is public outreach uh, in getting uh, stakeholders and other uh, collaborations established to get input from the community so that we can truly develop a community-wide plan um, for phase two. Thank you. And through you, Mr. Chairman, is the fund center to paying for this indicated proposed for the intent, or is it just an unused fund center that fits the spending category? Uh, through the chair, this is a, a budgeted account for this express purpose. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I yield the floor. Any other discussion? All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Item carries. Next item. Referral number 22-0337. Amend any municipal agreements between the Rondequoit Bay South Central Pure Waters District and the town of Webster. Moved by Legislator Hebert, second by Legislator Johns. Is there any discussion? Legislator Hebert. That's about certainly uh, through the chair. Um, looking back at the original uh, language uh, that was in the intermissible agreement, uh, the ownership and operation responsibilities of the gravity sewer were not clear. Um, they they uh, were intended. The spirit of the agreement was that they were intended to be a town sewer, town owned and operated sewer but the language was not clear in the agreement that was uh, established 20 years ago. We wanted to clarify that with the town. The town is agreeable to that. Um, they recognize that the gravity sewer itself is, is a, a town sewer. Thank you. That, that, that is a completely different interpretation of the clarification that I, I read into it, uh, which was you didn't know what you were agreeing to yet. <laughs> so, so thank you for that clarification. Um, And, and just to be clear, where does that sewage end up being treated through you, Mr. Chairman? Um, through the chair. Uh, it's a very interesting relationship between the town and the county. Uh, there's a diversion structure that's built into that system that sends Webster flow to the Webster plant and what we would call the Ronacoit Bay South Central Pure Waters Flow, Penfield Flow, um, down Bay Road. Um, to uh, the sandbar pump station, then to Van Lair. And that was a project that was done, as you know, from the referral 20 years ago, so that, that we could treat flow that was from, from Pure Waters districts and not uh, rely on uh, Webster to treat that flow. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, I yield the floor. Any other discussion? No other discussion, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Item carries, next item. Referral number 22-0358, commit general fund unassigned fund balance for the specific purpose of funding climate action initiatives as recommended in the adopted climate action plan, phase one of Monroe County. Moved by Legislator DeFlorio, second by Legislator Hebert. Is there any discussion? Legislator Hugh-Smith. I just again uh, like to extend my thanks to um, Kenneth Baker Fellow and my colleagues, President. Thank you. 
moving our aspirations into action. Thank you. Any other discussion? Legislator DeFlorio? Uh, yes, thank you. To the chair, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, do we have a spending plan outlined? I, I apologize if I missed one somehow um, for every single one of these million dollars. Uh, through the chair, uh, uh, as you may recall from uh, uh, the adoption of uh, the Climate Action Plan Phase 1, we have a number of potential projects that could be funded uh, with a million dollars, potentially. And some examples would be uh, building electric uh, heat pump systems, uh, energy efficient pumps at Van Laer, uh, uh, organic waste diversion policy uh, uh, study, uh, more EV charging stations, um, alternative power grounds maintenance equipment, uh, as well as non-expressway street lighting LED conversion. So there are projects, but we haven't established any formally yet for this million. This is good news that this, this million dollars is being uh, allocated, certainly. But uh, we have projects that are in the pipeline, if you will, uh, that could be funded with that million dollars. So through the chair, so the answer to that is no, there are no specific funding plans at this point. So I guess through the chair, my question is, why is this coming to this legislative body as a matter of importance? And why is it important to get this funding allocated today if there's no specific plans in place to even spend any of it through the chair? Uh, Mr. Chairman, um, it's only October 25th, but I'll, I'll, I'll give the committee and anyone listening a little uh, glimpse into the soon to be proposed 23 budget for the county. Um, this is a matter of importance to get this on your agenda and uh, hopefully voted on at the November meeting. Uh, we'd like to appropriate $200,000 for the 23 operating budget within Department of Environmental Services. There's a whole host of recommendations in the Climate Action Plan Phase 1, and uh, the $200,000 at least gets us started in uh, planning for those recommendations, evaluation, and implementation. We really need to do, take a hard look at which one of those recommendations can be uh, easily implemented first, second, uh, what will it cost to implement those, and this provides at least funding to accomplish that. Um, I'm sorry, through the chair, I guess maybe I'm misunderstanding. Um, so the 200,000 is in addition to the million or the 200, I'm confused. I'm sorry. Mr. Chairman, oh, the uh, intent would be to appropriate $200,000 of this $1 million commitment. Uh, and I'm sorry, in that 200,000, is coming out of the million and going to where? Mr. Chairman, the intent is to hopefully have the legislature commit a million dollars of fund balance for this purpose by the November meeting so that we can appropriate $200,000 of that for use in the 23 budget of the Department of Environmental Services. So through the chair, just to make sure I'm clear, um, so we would be allocating a million dollars in unrestricted funds today into an account that you would then propose taking 200,000 of and putting it into the 2023 budget for EPW. Is that correct? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Thank you. I'm going to think about that for a minute and I'll yield the floor. Well, sir Hubert. <laughs> Thank you. I, I just want to follow up on that question through you, Mr. Chairman. Why is it you need it done this, what seems to me to be a convoluted way as opposed to just allocating the funds in the budget in 2023 that you'll present to us in mid-November?
Mr. Chairman, um, through several legislators who participate in the Climate Action Advisory Committee, there had been a number of requests for a dedicated funding stream to help evaluate and implement recommendations of a climate action plan. Um, I will share that the request was to establish a fund to provide funding for specific climate action initiatives. New York State limits the types of funds Monroe County can create. In reviewing all those funds, uh, I felt the best course of action was to have the legislature commit fund balance for the specific purpose of funding climate action initiatives uh, because we cannot create a quote fund for this activity. Thank you. Through you, Mr. Chairman, why does the state limit what funds you can create? Uh, Mr. Chairman, all due respect, far be it for me to speculate on what the state legislature chooses that we can create. <clears throat> Understood. Um, let me let me ask that a different way. Through you, Mr. Chairman, help me understand why we're not creating something the state doesn't want. Mr. Chairman, the types of funds counties can create, I believe, are in uh, Section 6 of General Municipal Law. Perhaps it's 6L. I'm drawing a blank there. Um, the legislature, as, def as authorized in accounting standards, number 54, uh, the legislature, as the highest governing body of Monroe County, can specifically commit by resolution fund balance for specific purposes. Uh, so this is not an action. This, this is not a series of legislative actions that New York State would disapprove of or frown upon. This is well within the legislature's right to do. Thank you. That helps. And through you, Mr. Chairman, what does it mean when it says allowing the CFO to restore any unused, any used I believe it says used portion of committed fund balance back to a million dollars. Uh, Mr. Chairman, that was actually language I just kind of threw in because I thought a question might come up. Uh, if the legislature were to commit a million dollars uh, for specific climate action initiatives, at some point that million dollars is going to get used up and the legislature is going to want another million dollars again. Uh, so there's two ways to make that happen. Uh, one is to include language that allows me, when I'm preparing, or the controller's office is preparing the annual financial statements, uh, should the general fund have a surplus in any given year, just replenish uh, any used portion within um, that surplus. Or uh, if we don't run a surplus for the year, uh, appropriate dollars in the next budget to get us back to a million dollars. Um, so the, the choice is this body's, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, and through you, Mr. Chairman, one last question. The, um, will the administration be coming back to this body as the known usages for this million dollars, be, be, you know, you become aware of what they are to get approval to spend them on that? Is, is this kind of like putting it in another place where it now has to be approved for composting or, or whatever it might be that you decided to spend, spend it on? Uh, Mr. Chairman, that, that is the intent. Um, essentially, this, this funding, this committed fund balance can be accessed by specifically budgeting for its use in the upcoming annual operating budget for a particular initiative or initiatives. Uh, at some point during the year, uh, a referral can be introduced to the legislature to appropriate fund balance for some specific climate action. Um, if, if that specific action is a capital fund, we would need to go to the planning board and the full legislature to amend the CIP and 
create a capital project and amend the capital budget um, with a appropriation of fund balance. Um, so that that basically is the intent, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I yield the floor. Any other discussion? Oh, do you have a question? Nope. Oh. Uh, Legislator DeFlorio. Yeah, through the chair, I, I guess I just have a couple of additional follow-up questions. So this current this million dollars is currently in an unassigned fund balance because it was surplus that has not been spent throughout the year. It was unbudgeted funds, or I guess I'm wondering, it's now almost the end of October, where's this million dollars in surplus funds coming from? Mr. Chairman, I appreciate the accurate usage of unassigned fund balance. Thank you very much. Um, when you look at the county's financial statements, um, the general funds fund balance is categorized as non-spendable, restricted, committed, assigned, and unassigned. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I, I believe most people know fund balance is simply the accumulation over a long period of time of annual surpluses and deficits. Unassigned Non-spendable fund balance represents items that are not available to actually be spent. It could be a prepaid expense, it could be inventory, the money's already out the door, we just have a product and inventory waiting to be consumed. Uh, restricted are usually tied to grants, committed uh, fund balance is mostly as uh, associated with contracts that cross calendar years, so we have an obligated obligation to expend the remaining portion of a contract. Assigned fund balance is usually um, uh, assigned by me as CFO for an intent, but not a specific purpose. Uh, assigned, um, unassigned would be uh, funds that are available uh, for the county's use uh, to cover any future deficits or for appropriation for some for some reason. Uh, so this million dollars, Mr. Chairman, is today currently sitting in unassigned fund balance. Um, and this referral would shift that category to committed fund balance for $1 million. And through the chair, if this body took no action by the end of the year with this million dollars, what would happen to that million? Mr. Chairman, the million dollars would stay within the category of unassigned fund balance, except I did note a few minutes ago uh, the little glimpse into the 23 operating budget, I intend to appropriate $200,000 fund of fund balance within DES uh, to help start planning out the implementation of those recommendations. So through the chair, if this money were not allocated in this referral cycle, it could be used to be appropriated <laughs> into the 2023 budget in other categories through the chair? Mr. Chairman, um, the 23 budget, just like the 22 budget, frankly, just like the 21 budget, uh, does appropriate fund balance. Um, this would be just one more fund balance uh, that gets appropriate, the 200 grand. Um, if this legislature takes no action, the million dollars stays as unassigned fund balance um, it would not meet the request, Mr. Chairman, of those legislators associated with the uh, advisory committee to establish a separate, uh, a separate fund. But through the chair, could then be utilized for any other county projects that occurred in the upcoming year. Yes, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Any other discussion? Let's see, Hugh Smith. Thank you. Quick review. Um, the county has spent two years developing the phase one climate action plan. Within that plan, there's a uh, list of priorities, priority actions that have been impact, they're and their effectiveness and funds to move forward with these commitments that the Passing the uh, phase one plan last last. Year. 
administration uh, for their assistance. Any other discussion? All right, seeing those, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Item carries. Next item. Referral number 22-0359, amend the 2022 to 2027 capital improvement program and the 2022 capital budget to add a project entitled Airport Terminal Area Revitalization Airport slash Campus Innovations at the Frederick Douglass Greater Rochester International Airport, authorize finance for the project and authorize a grant agreement with New York State for aid relating to the project. Moved by Legislator Hebert, seconded by Legislator Johns. Is there any discussion? Legislator Hebert. Mr. Chairman, through you to the administration, could you tell us, please, why this is a matter of importance? Through the chair, Andy Moore, Director of Aviation, I requested this be a matter of importance due to the timing of the state grant. Uh, airports have 24 months to complete this project. 24 months includes design engineering approvals, and construction and then inspection. Uh, so the sooner we can get the approvals, the sooner we can get moving forward on the project. Also, in addition, the state of New York requires authorization to accept the funds from the local municipality. And so we need the county legislature to approve and ultimately the county executive to sign uh, authorizing Monroe County to receive these funds. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. What's the timeline for this project? I think you gave us a chunk of it, but when, when would you get started if it was approved this cycle? Through the chair, we have 24 months to complete all elements of the project, so two years. Um, we've actually kind of started with the project, to be perfectly honest with this body. Uh, as you know, every, every day counts. And so um, 24 months is when this project needs to be completed per the state of New York. Through you, Mr. Chairman, the administration, I, I note that the local share is 3.6 plus million dollars. Where is that money coming from? Through the chair, those are Monroe County Airport Authority funds. So there are no county dollars directly in the funding uh, mechanism of this proposal. Uh, so they will come from the airport uh, authority. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I yield the floor. Any other discussion? Legislator Mufuchi. Uh, obviously, I would like to express my support for this as a member of the airport authority. This is a very exciting project. The airport is a gateway to this community and region. Uh, and I do want to thank New York State for the 18 million. Thank you very much, Albany. Thanks, Legislator Mafucci. Is there any other discussion? Seeing no other discussion, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Item carries. Next item. Referral number 22-0363, authorize an amendment to the contract with Frontier Communications of Rochester concerning naming rights for the stadium located at 1 Maurice Silver Way in the city of Rochester. Moved by Legislator John, seconded by Legislator DeFlorio. Is there any discussion on this? Legislator DeFlorio. Um, Chair, his innovative data indicated um, that they intend to exercise the option to renew? And if so, what are the terms of the renewal option? Through the chair. Through the chair. Uh, so uh, under this amendment, Innovative will essentially stand in the place of Frontier, take Frontier's, uh, the majority of Frontier's obligations under the contract, so uh, which includes the mutual option of the county and Innovative to renew uh, going forward. Um, so it's subject to the, the same parameters that Frontier would have been subject to. Um, so Innovative has not, you know, formally made that commitment three years in advance, but we have, I mean, they, they are an interested, excited partner about joining this contract. And through the chair, um, do they have a timeline for making the, the obvious cosmetic changes to the stadium? Th through the chair, um, Innovative will be responsible for those changes to the stadium uh, in terms of in terms of cost for the signage. Um, they are uh, obviously pending approval of this body. Um, they are understanding as they will then move quickly to do so. Thank you. Any other discussion? 
All right, seeing none, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Item carries. With that, are there any other matters to come before this committee this evening? Seeing none, there being no other matters, the October 24th, 2022 meeting of the Environment and Public Works Committee stands adjourned. The next meeting of the Environment and Public Works Committee is scheduled for Monday, November 28th, 2022 at 515.